What's up guys, Takedown here with another top 10 video for you. Today is the top 10 video games that I played in 2017. Now that does not mean anywhere that all these games have come out in 2017. So hope you guys are ready and I hope you guys will enjoy this video. So coming in at number 10, something that reminded me of my childhood and it was also a free PS Plus game, regular 50 bucks whenever it first came out, which in my opinion was a little bit overpriced, uh, and that is Transformers Devastation. Honestly, if you remember the cartoons, the franchise, um, all the stuff, it's basically the 80s cartoon turned into a video game, and in my opinion, it was spot on. The stuff you could do, the special... Um, features, your special abilities, your weapons, you could change your weapons. And I finished the campaign, or yeah, I think it's the, the campaign on it. Great game. I do recommend it if you're a fan. I do recommend getting it at a low or um, used price if you're interested in the game, because I'm not sure how much it still is in the stores. But in my opinion, paying $50 for that game, it's such, uh, in my opinion, a short game. Not too long, didn't take me long to beat it, but that's because I enjoy the franchise of its own. Um, but that's why it gets number 10 on my list. Number 9 on my list is not just one game, but more of a series. And that is the Walking Dead Telltale series. Uh, the games, season 1, season 2, that's what I own. Looking to get season 3. Um, I did just purchase Michonne. Gotta get into it, of course. Um, number four, the final one of the series is going to be coming out in 2018. They've already announced that it will be the final one. But I haven't played these in 2017. I know they came out probably 2012, 2013 is whenever they, uh, the first one was released. But honestly, I love the story. I love Telltale with what they do. It's like a decision-making game, which is something I think is unique on its own. Um, it is short, it can get boring, if it story isn't your type of game and you're looking for more of an action game, Telltale is not for you, but for me, being a Walking Dead van, fan, a zombie fan, Telltale was right up my alley. I've also played the Borderlands uh, Telltale game, which I've never been into Borderlands, but you get the Borderlands story within the game, and I'm recently playing the Batman um, Telltale game, which hopefully I'll turn that into a series, as long as it gets the views and you guys are interested in that. But The Walking Dead, in on its own, deserves number 9 on this list because of... I didn't play it too much, I mostly played the second one in 2017, but it deserves a spot on this list, of course, because of how good it is in my opinion. But it gets number 9 for that reason. So in number 8 is a game that didn't come out in 2017 either. There is a reason for that. I didn't purchase the 2017 version of it. Um, and that is NHL 16. Now my rule of thumb with purchasing not only sports games, but especially NHL is one game per system. And I've been doing that since the PlayStation 2. I had one NHL game on PlayStation 2. PlayStation 3 I had NHL 13. PlayStation 4 I had NHL 16, but recently I have purchased NHL 18 just started getting into it and this list is about games I played in 2017 so that is why it is on this list as you guys know I am Canadian I am a hockey fan huge hockey fan I love playing my career mode which I chose the LA Kings if you're interested in knowing and I dominated and now that I have 18 I've kind of changed up my pace but I've also played GM mode so that is why it deserves number eight on this list Number seven is a game I have been getting for years. I think I'm close to 15 years straight, if not more. And that is WWE 2K17. Recently, I've purchased 2K18. But in 2017, I played more of 2K17, obviously. Because it just came out near the end of 17, the newest one. Um, playing the game a lot. Play it with Mike and Jack. Or at least we used to quite a bit. Um, we even had like our own championship and that sort of thing. 
I love playing online, love playing the universe mode, which that's what I drove towards. Played a lot of universe mode. You can set your own championship, make your own main events, do your own pay-per-views, and that's what I like doing. It's kind of like a GM mode um, with more abilities. That's why I liked it. Um, but I've been purchasing WWE games since, I want to say, 04, when uh, the first SmackDown versus Raw came out. And even a few more earlier than that, also on the PS2. So that's why it gets number seven on the on this list because of how many years I've been devoted to WWE and how much of a collection it really is to me. Number six on this list, I think, came out in 2013, and that is GTA 5. It's likely a game that's going to be on everybody's list at some point in time, but. I played a lot of it in 2017, more in 2017, and I grew a lot more. Of course, 2017 also brought for online um, bigger opportunities to make money uh, business-wise within the game. They added a few businesses, CEO stuff, bunker stuff, uh, recently added new things too. They've added new cars over the past year, I think more than they ever have, even though it came out 2013. It seems like this last year is whenever they gave us the most uh, bang for our buck. Not only that, I've been playing a lot of GTA uh, in 2017. So honestly, it was at number 10 on this list. I moved it up to number 6. It could have went up higher, but what I have ahead is, in my opinion, better games that I played more of in 2017. And that's what this list is about. I've been playing GTA since San Andreas. San Andreas would be probably my top. A GTA game just because of how big it is but for I like a lot of the new features in GTA 5 that wasn't in the old ones plus the graphics are a lot better so that's why it gets number six on this list number five is a game that I believe came out 2013 2014 as well and that is South Park the stick of truth recently as you guys have been seeing I have the new game, The Fractured Butthole. Honestly, I love them both. If you're going to play South Park, The Fractured Butthole, which is their newest game, it is highly recommended you play Stick of Truth first, which I don't know if it's um, a forever thing, but if you purchase the new game, you get the uh, Stick of Truth with it for free. That might be limited time. I'm not sure. So I have both. I've already played Stick of Truth, beaten it. But to play the second one, it makes a lot more sense to go back and play the first one, first one because the story mode, or the story is a continuation, which I'm glad they chose to do that as opposed to it's just a brand new game. Uh, figure out your character's story along the way. So in the first one, Stick of Truth, you really find the meaning towards your character uh, and what to do. And you know, at the end of the game, you find out what your character is there for, why he came to this town, and the whole works. And in the second game, whenever you... You, you see some of the stuff you go, if you never played the first one, it won't entirely make sense. So I recommend doing that. I played a lot of Stick of Truth in 2017. I have it on the PS3. That's what I played it on. Not a PS4, um, but now I have it on the PS4. And I'm playing it quite a bit just to get some of the trophies and work on it. So that's why it gets number five on this list. I know it's an older game. It's not the newest one of the series. But I played it the most out of the two in 2017, and that's what this list is about. So it gets number five. So number four on my list is Fallout 4. That was kind of a coincidence that Fallout 4 is number four on the list. But anyways, the reason it's number four on the list is because of how open a uh, world it is. I love Fallout 4. I played Fallout 3. That was the only other one I've played. Honestly, I love what they do. I love how the uh, creatures have evolved. I played Fallout 3, now I'm at Fallout 4, and you see quite a big difference with some of the mutants, especially the ones back then. You're like, okay, they, they weren't that scary. Now it's like, Jesus, they evolved quite a bit uh, over a couple hundred years. Um, so that's there. It's also on this list because it is my top gaming series or any other kind of series on my channel right now. It is around the 80 episodes mark. I'm hopefully going to make it to episode 100. It's been kind of a, a push lately to get views. It's hard on getting views right now. So it might end before episode 100. 
but I enjoy the game, I enjoy the quests, I enjoy everything about it, and hopefully when the series is done, I'm going to get more into just playing the game for myself, not really having to make an episode, but that's why it deserves number four on this list, because of how much I played in 2017, as you guys know, 80 episodes was a lot for me, and that's pretty much, I think, from February on uh, 2017, that's why I played it, so it gets number four on this list. So now we are getting into the top three games that I played in 2017. This game here, I believe, came out 2016. They tend to release a game every two years. That is Battlefield 1. In my opinion, it is one of the best and most fun war games I have ever played. I've been playing war games since the PS2. So I've had the PS2, PS3, a few on PS4. It can't... It... it, it Call of Duty can't compete with it anymore, in my opinion. World War II is a different story. It uh, goes back to Call of Duty's original days. But Battlefield 1, if I had to choose a war game to play out of any war game, it would be Battlefield 1. If you're into history, which is one thing that I like and I enjoy too, the history behind the game, and I know a lot of people are like, the history is not there. To me, the history is there. The uh, scenery is there, the, icon the uh, iconicness is there, and it, it um, on its own is a great game. I've used to never be a Battlefield fan, but that game has changed my mind, and I can't wait for their next game. Hopefully comes out 2018. We do not know. They haven't announced it yet, but that's why it gets number three on this list, and because of how much I played it in 2017. It's not the most played game I had in 2017, but it's the most fun game I played in 2017. So number two on my list, ironically, is UFC 2. That wasn't for the, the reason I chose number two for this spot, but it's the gameplay behind it. Now, I'm not entirely into UFC. I do watch a lot of UFC matches, fights, pay-per-views. I do know who I like, the champions and such, the uh, fighters. But it's really the first fighting game that I really got into. I know I have WWE on this list, but... Uh, UFC 2 deserves number 2 on this list because of how thought out it is. Career mode is what I played the most of. I uh, beat career mode. It's something unique about the game is once you beat career mode, you unlock the DLC that you can get whenever the whenever you can purchase it uh, anytime throughout the whole game. You get that stuff unlocked. Of course, it's other features you get with uh, purchasing Season Pass and the other DLC stuff. But you get all the other fighters like Bass, Rutan, Mike Tyson, uh, Bruce Lee. And I think there might be one or two more I'm missing. So in on itself, it is a great game. Plus, a bonus is that I'm the best out of me, Jack, Mike, and a few others that we I've played along the, the years. So I like the game. I'm good at it. And that's why it gets number two on this list. And finally, we have the number one game that I enjoyed playing 2017. Didn't come out in 2017, but it is Need for Speed 2015. I don't know if that's the official title. I think it was just called Need for Speed. But I played that the most in uh, 2017, I believe. Even to the point that I platinumed the game, which is um, platinum, platinum um, any game. I know I stuttered there. But uh, getting any game platinumed uh, on PlayStation, only 4% of the people can actually do that. And it is my fourth game that I've platinumed on it. So I'm proud of that achievement. So that's one reason it's number four. Or that's one reason it's number one on my list. The other reason, of course, is I love cars. I love racing. It is a great racing game. I get to customize my cars the way that I think it through, the way that I think they deserve to be looked. And... I've done great over the years. I've done car builds on this channel with it. Uh, I do have Need for Speed Payback. That's probably going to be one of the top games on my 2018 list that I'm going to make at the end of 2018 or early 2019. But Need for Speed 2015 gets number one on my list because of how much I played it, how much I enjoyed playing it, and the entirety of the game. I enjoyed the, I enjoyed everything about the game. That's So that's why it gets number one on my list. Every other game... There's a few that could have been moved up, but there's a few features that I just didn't like. Need for Speed 2015 didn't have any features that I didn't like, so that's why it gets number one on my list.
So hope you guys enjoyed it. This has been my top 10 games that I played and enjoyed playing in 2017. That didn't mean that they came out in 2017, but that's what I enjoyed in playing 2017. As you guys know, I've played a lot of games over the past year, more than I've listed. Let me know down below what are your top games that you played in 2017 or some of the top games that you own. Anyways, hope you guys did enjoy. I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.